we are now going to pivot towards current day trending uh, NBA topics. But first, as always, we like to lead off the program with a moment in time. Today, Sheed, our moment in time is February 20th, 2001. What happened in the world of Rasheed Wallace, February 20th, 2001? Portland. Mm-hmm. Uh, was, was it, are you talking about the light little melee that we had with Golden State? Could no, that possibly but, be? No, but I feel like now that you said it, I need to ask about this. I don't remember you getting into a little altercation. <laughs> Golden State. What happened that day, even before we run the tape? Oh man! Um, so so we beat them on a buzzer beater, and Bonzi and um, uh, Chris Mills had a little, you know, had a little beef, and benches cleared, and you know the fans were throwing drinks and everything on us, and and it got so heated. Chris Mills was so heated that um, you know he had stopped a bus. Like had a couple of his homies, they pulled their cars up in front of the bus to where we couldn't leave, telling Bonzi to come on out, y'all come on out now, this and that. We had to get um, the extra police to come and take us to the airport. This this was pre-Malice at the Palace as well. So the days of yeah. fuck around and find out that, that meme, that graph, uh, that was not a thing just yet. And people had the audacity <laughs> to roll up. This was in Oakland too, I assume? Yeah, yeah. The old stadium, not not the new one. A lot of our yeah. fans probably know, us, know the Warriors being in the new stadium. But no, this is the Oakland Stadium, the one right next to the um, baseball field. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess it was like that, that some shit happens on the court at the professional level and you got fans <laughs> cutting you off on the way to the airport. I mean, do the players want to get off the bus in that case or are you all just like, go away, stop stop throwing shit? No, nah, no, nah, we chill. You know, uh, our, our team security and our people are like, man, do y'all just maintain, you know, we got another game, this and that. And our bottom line was we'll see them again. All right. Fair enough. Uh, till till another day, till, till the palace at Auburn Hills, there was no – there was no malice on this bus. Let's put it that way. But all right. February 20th, 2001 was. It got me stuck uh, there. Yeah. This was the night of your career high of 42 points. We, we, I think we, uh, we alluded to this er- earlier in the season, but it's against the Nuggets. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were asking, what is your, like you, when you said, I'm not someone that's really like looking to score the ball that often. I do what, what's needed that night. But. You once upon a time had 42 points before the days of NBA scoring inflation in which 40 points are every single night. <laughs> These final scores were 90 to, to 85 if it was a high scoring game. So 42 is a lot. Do you so everyone everyone remembers their their season high, every every conversation that I've had, but is the bench telling you like, yo, Sheed, you're two away, you're, you're five away, you're two away from your career high, or are you just out there playing and if it happens, it happens? What what was going on this night? Um, no, we're just out there playing. We're just out there playing. Um, you know, you see as from from looking at the guys out there we, as that dice, Rafe with friends. Um, you know, I definitely couldn't uh, – it wasn't no night off against Antonio McDice. i definitely tell you that now because to me, in my book, against Power Forwards, it was four of them that I mainly had to go up against, and I had to be top notch. McDice, C. Webb, um, Duncan, and Garnett. So those were my nights. But no, to be honest, man, I, I remember this night, but I it's, it doesn't really stand out to me as like, oh man, you know, I, I had everything going this night, this and that. Da, 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 da. It was it was um because I'm not one to look at the score sheet after the game. My whole overall thing is wins and losses. It don't matter if I if I could have scored zero points that night, as long as we got the win. That's my whole thing, and um, so I, I never really um, uh, never really thought about it too much. I guess after this night, tell you the truth. <laughs> Did you ever? I, there's some players. So between Lafrenz, McDice, I see Nick Van Axel out there. I believe yeah, for for, for the Nuggets, Nick. Mc, mm-hmm. and people forget that McDice was John Leonard. Yeah, but Sean Leonard's out there too. Some big names. Uh, and, and that was with Sean Leonard right after his Miami Heat days as well in his prime that it, mm-hmm. we kind of like forget about Antonio McDice for a second because I was alive when the Knicks traded their entire franchise to acquire the man. He was that dominant of a player. And I don't want to say he was yes, the sir. original Brandon Roy in someone that had a major knee injury that cut off their career because he, t- 
to his credit, McDice had a stellar career before his injury. He was, you know, all star, uh, mm-hmm. someone that you circled on the calendar. Uh, and if mm-hmm. that's someone that's out there that, right, he was one of those guys for you. Like, this is, I got McDice tonight and I got to make sure I'm laced up. Definitely, especially especially when he was uh, when we were rookies during that time because he played with um, the Kembe Mutombo and Rodney Rogers and, and a lot of people might not know Rodney Rodney Rogers, the crafty lefty from the Raleigh Durham area, went to Wake Forest, had a lengthy career in the NBA. Um, but T Top, you know, Rodney Rogers, the husky dude. So it, imagine, and he was athletic, just as athletic as McDice. So imagine them three. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, shit, mm-hmm. all right, this this no cakewalk again, like I said. So, yeah, definitely had to circle that game with McDice. Even when McDice was in Phoenix, even when McDice was in New York, my thing was I'm glad me and Dice played together for about, you know, two, three years when we were in Detroit. So, you know, but, yeah, man, Antonio McDice, man, that's – and here's the thing about McDice. He could shoot now. He wasn't a three-point shooter. But you had to respect his mid-range because he can come pick and pop, pick and roll. He'll give you that jab step, boom, pull up for that J15, 18-footer. So you got to respect his jump shot and his athleticism, man. He could have competed in a dunk contest and probably won it, but that's not his style. You know, he would mm-hmm. rather dunk on you opposed mm-hmm. to getting some he was, dunk he was a violent. He was a violent power dunker that I would say was the precursor to what many people know as prime Amari Stoudemire, a big man with that type of bounce, violent bounce.